Yeah, we're all just talking about am I an early bird or not. And? I think I'm still pondering the answer to that <laughs> question. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say yes. So uh, thanks, thanks to the early birds out there. It's not that early, is it? No, it's not that it's, early. It's getting on now. But some musicians do think that 11 a.m. with a 10 a.m. Yeah. arrival is quite early. Well, you know, you've got the good coffee here. I'm a coffee snob, so I've already had about five. So there's a little jitter going on and a song in my heart and a jitter in my hands, you know. Well, let's see just what an early bird you are, <laughs> a caffeinated early bird. Let's hear some music. It's Jamie Liddell live on KEXP. Oh, oh, oh. 
<laughs> Jamie Liddell live on KEXP. I think we answered the question of whether you are a morning person. Anyone who can sing like that in the morning. The bigger question is you've turned me into a morning person because I'm over here dancing. Yeah, right. And I am man. not a morning person. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, let's keep it going. Let's keep the, let's, you know, I want to start this. This is a song off the new album called What a Shame. Definitely one for the morning. Morning posse. Conversation. Though I'm the king of hesitation, I always said that I would please you. I understand that we're in danger. Snowing, treat you. I really hate the way I treat you. And I know we're in danger. When I think, oh, what a shame. So I is the way you treat you Make me feel like a stranger You say I feel like, yeah, I'm a stranger When I know we're in danger And I think, oh, what a shame What a shame Fade out. <laughs> we don't want to miss a minute of it. Off, you know I mean? 
<laughs> Jamie Liddell working up a sweat live in the KEXP studios with What a Shame from his new self-titled album, Jamie Liddell. When you name an album after yourself this far into your career, is it sort of like your baby? Like it could be Jamie Liddell Jr.? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, or maybe Jamie Liddell Sr.? <laughs> I mean, yeah, who knows? I mean, um, it's weird. Sometimes I just... Uh, Sometimes I just can't come up with good album titles. That's the honest truth. I tried with this album. I was coming up with, you know, track titles like I usually do. That's how I came up with the name Multiply. Jim was a little bit different. Actually, that was Matthew Herbert. He used to call me Jim. And somehow it stuck because, you know, I, I, I like that. And my uncle's called Jim. Jamie Liddell, it hadn't been done. I thought I needed to come back with a bold album, which I think I did. I agree. After Compass. So it's like, what better way to kind of re-emerge from the chrysalis, you know, than just to kind of self-title it. You know, and it's, and it's just, you know, I feel, I feel fresh. You know, I might not look fresh, but that's, this, you know, that's the bus. You do look fresh. Oh, thanks. Yeah, well, I mean, that's it. There's a freshness going on. And I just thought, man, why not just re-emerge? And you are correct. The album sounds super fresh and vibrant. And you've been known to cover um, disparate sounds on your albums and, you know, your genre. It's hard to pin you down yeah. to any genre, which is what makes your music fun. You've certainly come back to the funk um, and the hmm. dance in a big way on this album. Right. Um, what, what were you inspired by when you were thinking about this next album? Yeah, I mean, it's funny because I moved to Nashville... I know. Right. We need to talk about that for a minute. <laughs> and that's the kind of the strange. Strangely enough, that's kind of like where the funk came from for this record. A lot of a um, lot of music that we were listening to on the radio. Ninety two Q is our like local radio station. Uh, we ke always keep it locked to that station. Michael Basden. He just. He, it's it's like the radio station I always wish I had growing up as a kid. They play you know the Gap Band. They play Atomic Dog as if it was like a national anthem, you know, you play it every week, you know, it's just always playing somehow. So it's kind of like hearing Janet Jackson, hearing like these decadent kind of 90s Bobby Brown and just like good tunes, you know what I mean? R&B, like, you know, no shame, just like the heavy, heavy R&B. So that radio station really had a lot to do with this album. Just hearing those big slabs of kind of funk from that era, it's a lot to do with where I'm coming from. I mean, you know, not exclusively, but that's a big part of who I am. You know, I grew up in the 80s and I'm a huge Minneapolis Prince fan, Jammin' Lewis. That's, uh, that's, that's a big part of who I am. I'm a strange bird, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> if Jammin' Lewis walked in now, they'd be like, this guy? You know, but that's, that's part of the mystery of the Jamie Liddell thing. Well, is that R&B, which has always been in your music, what drew you to Nashville? Because you've done stints in Berlin and New York, and I think Jamie Liddell, that makes sense. And then when I heard you moved to Nashville, I was like, <laughs> Keep them guessing. Um, I mean, when did you move there? and what, what drew you there? It's been a couple of years now. Um, after New York, just space. You know, Sun Ra was right. Space is the place. And uh, that's it. We needed space. We needed time. We needed, like, the essential, you know, philosophical, you know, cornerstones of existence. You know, um, obviously a roof above your head, somewhere to uh, take uh, relief of the bowel and, uh, you know, to, to make art. <laughs> and do you like the pace of life there? Uh, I'm, I'm fond of it. Yeah, I am fond of it. It's, it's, it's true. It, it doesn't demand so much of you, Nashville. It's, you know, in, in a place like New York, a legitimate metropolis, no offense, Nashville, but, you know, there's a, there's a force... You know, everyone has a hot minute attitude, you know, like, you know, come on, you know, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? And because everyone's like watching the pennies and there's a desperation a little bit to that, which I like, you know, but by contrast, Nashville just kind of leaves you alone a little bit. And I also really appreciate that. I like to have space to think, to make art. You know, Harmony Kareen is our friend now and he could live anywhere he wants. Like he's a big star, you know. But he grew up in Nashville and he returned to Nashville because that's where he finds he can get his, you know, his funk on. So uh, I can relate to that, you know. It sounds sublime. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of space, uh, you have your own studio there, is that right? Yeah. And I know you worked with uh, Beck and Chris Taylor on Compass. Mm -hmm. um, how was the making of this record now that you have your own space at home? Very, very different. And... Um, I don't think it's for everyone, you know, there's, 
that some people should never own their own coffee machine, for example. You know, they're just going to get like crazy. And it's the same with studio in the house. You could just go mad. Uh, you know, you could destroy any social life. You could, you know, become an absolute hermit, lunatic, you know, Phil Spector style or something. You know what I mean? But um, with me, it really works. I just, I, I have kind of, you know, as we've established, I'm a morning person. I kind of roll out in the morning, have a quick yawn, make a delicious breakfast. I love, love a like, you know, this kind of quality of life. You can walk in the studio, everything's set up and just start making and just kind of like, you know, it's not just kind of like without effort. You know, obviously you've got to put the hours in, you've got to like dig, but um, it's nice to dig in an, an environment that you've made yourself. You know what I mean? It's like a den. It's like a den. So like, I feel like a kid. I've got all my stuff, got all my toys. Dig my it in playroom. your own garden. You know, why not? You know, if you can, you know, I don't take it for granted. I try not to. Well, it sounds like you've created an idyllic life for yourself there. Well, you know, I like to paint the picture. Well, I mean, it, 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 that's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, it's not without struggle. Making art is always a bit of a mad one, isn't it? But I think it, we are already crazy enough artists. Sort of like, why, why make it harder than it already is? It's a strange life. Because, you know, you have ups and downs and it's a fashion industry, the music industry, as you know. So uh, you've always got to stay kind of like in the game and there's a lot of other things going on. But the music part is the spiritual part for me and and best place for that is the home for me. It sounds like the delicious breakfast is an important part of it as well. Well, absolutely. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And uh, working off the gut <laughs> as well. Tonight, Jamie Liddell plays at Numo's here in Seattle and tomorrow heading up to Vancouver, B.C. to the Fortune Sound Club. You have time yes. for more music? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, this is another song off the new album. It's a little bit more of a, a chill track. It's not all uh, aggro on the new record. This song's about, um, well, you work it out as the song goes along. It's called Don't You Love Me.
there it is. And that was awesome. You got me off my chair dancing. I can only imagine what fun's going to be had at Numos tonight.